Oh boy, it's time for another business discussion. And this one, oh, this is a good one. Now, I'm sure over the past few days, you've been seeing the plethora of Netflix headlines, real eye poppers. But since it's a lot of business jargon, I'm making a video to break it all down. Oh, again, I'm so excited for this. Tuck, tuck in, get some snacks, get ready. Now, because this is also deliciously ironic, because recently Hollywood has been covering a bunch of tech company unicorns that were slaughtered. I'm talking We Crashed, The Dropout. But now, their very own unicorn, Netflix, is in danger, as well as the future of streaming services overall. Maybe someday they'll make a streaming show about Netflix and maybe streaming in general. Wouldn't that be hilarious? By the way, watch both We Crashed and Dropout. They're not only highly entertaining, but you will learn a lot. I think you'll, I think you'll learn a lot from both, but if you have to pick one, you'll really learn a lot from We Crashed. And We Crashed, I think, relates to this situation specifically in terms of overspend, and I'm going to touch on that in this video. So, what's happening? Why is it happening? What's Netflix doing about it? What does it mean for other streaming services? And what do I think might happen in the near future? That's right, this stuff's happening on Fast Forward. I've even predicted a lot of this stuff to you. Oh, it's so fun. All right, let's discuss. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts down below. All right, so on Tuesday, Netflix, a publicly traded company, it's not always fun to be a publicly traded company, they had no choice but to reveal that for the first time in a decade, they lost subscribers. Hoo boy! For the first quarter of 2022, Netflix had expected to gain 2.5 million subscribers, but instead they lost 200,000. Now you might be like, well, that's not so bad, but they're projecting that for the next quarter, the second quarter of the year, they're gonna lose another two million. They tried to blame it a little bit on discontinuing service in Russia, but Wall Street knows this is a bigger picture problem. Now, Wall Street, who many felt had greatly overvalued Netflix's stock, because they did, panicked. Oh my God, the party's over, man. Let's get out of here. And the stock fell, it plummeted 35% on Wednesday. Uh, and it's still not doing great. It's not like it bounced back. Uh, and a lot of Netflix's value, as you're gonna see in this video, actually comes from its stock, particularly for the people who work there. That's where a lot of their value is. So that falling apart's not good. Uh, but also, uh, and this, by the way, was the worst performance of Netflix's stock since 2004, almost 20 years ago. Oh. Uh, in fact, Disney, Warner Brothers, Paramount, and Spotify all saw drops in their stock because of their own positions in the streaming space. And again, Wall Street's getting real nervous. Basically, the street, Wall Street, now feels that there is a ceiling on how many people will subscribe to a service and that Netflix just hit that ceiling. Now, of course, it had to happen someday. Streaming services, especially uh, the original streaming service, like the Coke of streaming services, the original and the top one, Netflix can't add new customers forever, especially because they have family plans. It's not like, hey, welcome to the world, baby. Here's your Netflix subscription. So, you know, I think that really slows down growth. But Netflix, I mean, but Wall Street didn't expect Netflix to, to reach that ceiling with just a little over 200 million subscriptions, considering there are basically 8 billion people in the world. I mean, again, a lot of them are children, but when you think about that, 200 million is actually a very small market share. All right, so I think that this also points to churn. So I guess there's only so many people in general who even want a streaming service. Uh, and then those that do have it are churning, baby. They're churn, churn, churning. Now, if you don't know the term churn, and you should, if you watch my channel regularly, you know the term churn. But if you don't, let me educate you. Churn is when you drop, it's like riding your subscriptions. So you'll be like, okay, I'll subscribe to Netflix for this month, but then I'm gonna switch over to Disney Plus for this show. Because you don't wanna be subscribed to all the services at once. And that's why many of us saw this coming, right? Sure, streaming services offer premium content. They offer amazing content. It's truly uh, like, the, like an amazing, uh, new age for television. It's never been better. They're giving movies a run for their money in terms of quality. They're like eight to 12 hour movies. It's phenomenal. Uh, it's hard to do that though, <laughs> as we're seeing, to create that. 
But you can't get all the streaming services. If you do, it's more expensive than cable ever was, and some people still even have cable, so they're paying for that in addition. I still have not been able to cord cut. Uh, I think it's coming, though. And while everyone likes to look down their nose on traditional network TV these days, at least that was free. So, I mean, just think the, at the span, how, how quickly it's happened to go from free network television to cable, to pay cable, uh, and which included also premium cable, to now a ridiculous number of subscription services. Netflix just started sending you a DVD in the mail. Ah, fascinating. Uh, all right, so that's why this is a tech company, just like the dropout and we cra uh, you know, cr uh, we crash follow. Uh, so immediately when this happened on Tuesday, when they had to share this upsetting news, Netflix said, hey, we're on it. And they said, we're going to cut down on password sharing, which I gave you the heads up on already. But they're doing it. They're doing it, man. They, adver they average like 100 million people are getting Netflix for free. That shouldn't be. Uh, and they said they admitted that they allowed password sharing for all this time to propel growth and to get people talking about and hooked on Netflix. Not that hooked if they're experiencing churn, but we're going to get to that. They also said, and this is a genuine shocker, that they are going to quickly develop an ad-supported plan that will be less expensive than their current plan to combat churn. Uh, is it too expensive to remain subscribed to Netflix and all these other services? Well, why don't you downgrade to the ad model, to the ad uh, offering? But Netflix had sworn they would never do this and made fun of other streaming services that did. And now they're like, move over, man. <laughs> And I'm telling you, I feel it in my bones. I've told you this for a while now, but I'll tell you again. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not even the, in the next year or so, but microtransactions like in gaming are coming. It's obvious. If I, were, if I were a streaming executive or an executive who oversaw a streaming service, I would today or yesterday or on Tuesday, if not beforehand, would be telling my team to think of reasonable ways to do microtransactions. And you might be like, they'll never do that, Grace. Well, <laughs> Netflix said they'd never do an ad-supported uh, system, uh, and yet here it comes. So never say never, especially when you need to show growth to your, to your investors. Netflix has vowed also to spend less on content. It was also revealed this week that Stranger Things Season 4 costs $30 million per episode. Wow, they should put that in the ad campaign, because I'm like, wow, what's in each episode? That must be amazing. And it, I mean, I honestly, honestly believe they should do that. And it's been reported that they are quietly but quickly phasing out their in-house animation division because, because, of course, animation is costly. All right, now, why did this happen? Well, besides churn. Well, well, we'll talk about churn. It actually factors into this. But I believe it's not just the proliferation of other streaming services, top-notch ones with tremendous brand recognition, no less but that all these other streaming services advertise, and Netflix does not. Netflix is even very weak with their outreach to press. So up until now, Netflix has relied on customers wanting to get the most out of their subscription. So, this, so the customers would just watch whatever new stuff Netflix served up each week. They didn't need to advertise. They just had a, a row of new content, and people would click. But with great shows and movies on other services, including big studio theatrical releases hitting services just 45 days after release, all of which are advertised heavily, Netflix is suddenly falling victim for the first time, really, to churn. Suddenly it seems like, oh, well, maybe I can miss a month of Netflix because I really want to check out this show on Disney Plus and I want to watch The Batman on HBO Max at no extra cost. So... That's a big deal. People will churn. I've seen you guys do it. You'll drop into a streaming service. Uh, you'll do either the one month or you'll do a free trial. You'll watch as much stuff as you can because you come to me and you're like, I just got on. I just got like Apple TV. Quick, what should I watch for my seven days or for my month? Let me watch as much HBO Max as I can. And then you'll jump to someplace else. And Netflix in the past has, was really the only service where you just parked your butt and stayed there. Uh, Netflix and Disney Plus. But now they're having. That's becoming a problem and it's probably going to only get worse. So they're going to have to advertise to make sure that you're not like, oh man, I can't drop Netflix this month. They have X, Y, and Z hitting. Because up until now, you only knew the week of. All right, the other issue is how Netflix spends money. Oh, this gets even better. They didn't want, uh, they didn't want to spend money on advertising because they were sinking it all, billions, into content creation 
and, and uh, acquiring executives. So just as their stock was overvalued, Netflix has overvalued a lot of their content, overpaying to lure top talent and greenlighting projects, often the pet projects of said top talent, that no other studio would touch. Remember The Irishman? Nobody else would pay for that. Red Notice Universal said, too expensive. Netflix was like, here you go. They also overpaid for executives to lure them away from the other studios, sometimes getting sued in the process. But Netflix felt it was worth it not only to get these big name talents, but the relationships with, uh, you know, big names executives, but the relationships that those executives had with talent to bring them into the fold, right? Why did Zack Snyder come over to Netflix? Because he has a relationship with Scott Stuber. I mean, there are other reasons, I'm sure, but that was a big factor in opening that door. So those conversations could happen. This reminds me a bit of Adam Newman from WeWork, depicted by Jared Leto in the current series, We Crashed, on Apple TV. Uh, watch it, really, I'm telling you. you. Not only is it great, but you will learn so much. All right, so anyway, Newman, wanting, wanting to scale quickly, like other tech unicorn companies in the past, overspent to fuel tremendous growth. And to some degree, it did work, as he did have impressive revenue. He was spending more than he was making, but his argument was is that like Amazon wasn't profitable for years so that they could corner the market. And that's what Adam Newman was trying to do. I think in some ways his business sense was sound. But in addition to many other problems that he had, as you'll see when you watch the show, he didn't realize that he had a business that wasn't scalable. Renting office space is a very different business than having the new Sears catalog, which is what Amazon is. Uh, and streaming is a business that might not be scalable either in the long run. This is fascinating. Streaming has a single monthly purchase point. It has no variety of product and no real way to offer new products or of varying prices as all content is included with your subscription. How many times do you make a purchase from Amazon each month, right? That is that, and, and they can offer new products that could, you know, that could inspire you to make more purchases. Uh, and in the holidays, uh, it makes you buy even more. You know, there's ups and downs. It's just consistent, you, you know, and, and the only way, only place to go is down because of churn. So that's, I think, fascinating as to the type of business model streaming is. Uh, they, you know what they say about having a huge company that's successful? It's all about, is it scalable? That's why you gotta watch this stuff. All right, so, um, and I hope you feel that includes uh, these videos. All right, so anyway, what does this mean for the streaming business overall? Well, it means Netflix really was too good to be true. Hollywood saw the billions of dollars Netflix was making in revenue though, not profit. That was something they should have considered. Uh, and like a tech unicorn company, like WeWork, it wasn't so much the money coming into Netflix that made it profitable, but it, there was huge value in owning Netflix stock. So, you know, you would get stock options and a lot of people were invested and they loved seeing their stock go up because it was going up ridiculously high uh, because Netflix again was a unicorn. But now the stock has plummeted in value, which is adding to the panic. Uh, so every major studio and Amazon and Apple started their own streaming services based on the success of Netflix. But if Netflix has already stumbled, what, like just two years into this bo streaming boom, that's it? Uh, and they're the industry leader? What does that mean for everyone else? When will they hit their subscriber ceilings? How bad will churn be for them? We're already seeing HBO Max and Disney Plus panic to some degrees themselves with what they're doing. Uh, and how you can see how much they're prioritizing making sure you stay subscribed. It also means the end of the creative utopia that Netflix was for Hollywood talent. Netflix was guaranteed to love your idea and overpay you to make it. Uh, remember the SNL sketch of them just throwing money at people? It was funny because it was true. Uh, well, no more. Now Netflix is going to have to get as tough on their creatives and their executives as the rest of Hollywood. No more just luring people over. People are gonna talent both in front of and behind the camera, are gonna have to show results, just like you do everywhere, you know, like a business. Anyway, ironically, Hollywood has been following the Netflix utopia model for their own streaming services, overspending, overpaying. So Netflix's problems here will likely make the other streaming services dial back on their own content even faster. You know, it took Netflix like 20 years or so, uh, but you're gonna see, I think these other streaming services go, uh-oh. So if they can't create a whole bunch of new content, how are they gonna get you on there? Well, I think they're gonna rely, particularly the studio-backed ones, 
on bringing in theatrical content to the streaming service, that 45 day window, and also sending more movies direct to streaming, like they've been doing with the Pixar movies. I think that's gonna become even more popular and more aggressive. As I told you, I heard a rumor, a rumor, that Doctor Strange 2 will hit Disney Plus in 45 days, and it seems to have worked pretty darn well for the Batman. And I'm, you know, we know that Disney really values Disney Plus, so the potential loss in global box office might be worth it to them to make sure you don't churn. All right, so on that note, finally, in addition to that, what else do I think will happen in the future with streaming? I think the dream of every studio having their own streaming service is a nightmare. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, it's not reasonable. I think Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Amazon, and maybe HBO Max, because it has HBO behind it, they're safe due to size and branding. But the other services, CNN+, Plus, didn't even last a month. Uh, I told you, I think it'll likely be folded into whatever Discovery turns HBO Max into. But I believe everyone else, all the other companies and studios will still produce streaming content, but it, they will sell it to the big four. And the big four will not be like they are now. They will have ads. Disney Plus is prepping their own ad-supported version for later this year as they get ready to raise the regular price. Less original content and, again, Microtransactions, microtransactions are coming, and just like you know, Disney Plus has already done them with uh, the you know the Disney Premier Access. That was a microtransaction. It didn't feel very micro, but that's what that was. I'm very curious to see what they come up for with microtransactions. I feel like it maybe could be making you pay for extras, early access. That's crazy. People are going to get so mad, but they have to show growth. All right, anyway, as for Apple TV, I think they're in a unique position because they have their own marketplace with iTunes where they do a lot of business. So I believe, as I've said recently, that their service will evolve to where you can either subscribe for all of it or you can pay for it a la carte like all the movies and TV on Apple TV. I think, I don't know why they're not doing that already, quite frankly, because they have actually the most churn. Uh, they have some of the best content. I think the best content right now is on HBO Max and Apple TV. They just really have amazing content. Uh, I like all the streaming services. It's a great time to be watching. I mean, I just recently, I got to watch the final season of Ozark for screeners. I'm not allowed to talk about it until April 25th, but oh boy. All right, so anyway, cable and network TV will continue to, and that's Netflix. They got stuff coming. Cab uh, cable and network TV, I think, will continue to fade away with live events like the Super Bowl and the Oscars making streaming deals with the big four instead of network TV. And it's funny to me because there used to be, you know, I think with Fox, four big networks. And I think you're gonna end up with four big streaming services. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Oh, it's fantastic. With these ad services, they better not play the same ad at every break like Hulu, damn it. I tried to do Hulu with ads and every break it was the same commercial. It was it's like torture, I couldn't take it after a while anymore. And maybe that was the plan, because I did upgrade to the full service. All right, so anyway, what do you think? And what do you think about watching this premium content with ads? Is it a sacrifice you're willing to make to have more services, or are you just gonna keep on churning? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.